Pioneer. Those who know Car Audio should know this brand very well. They've been around for quite a while. Going way back to 1975, they introduced the world's first component car stereo. What does this mean? Well, it just means they broke out the cassette player and the tuner, as you can see here in these models. Now, in 1984, they did introduce the first car CD player, which I'm going to show here, the CDX-1. And this one did not have a tuner built in, but it was the first car CD player. And here is a commercial that actually shows it. Really cool. If you watch until the very end of the video, I'm going to show that full commercial. So make sure you check that out. Pioneer also has made amplifiers for a while. And today we're going to look at some of their least expensive models, the GM line, and specifically the GMA 3702, which retails on the Pioneer site for $90. Although it retails for 90, you can check places like Amazon at $65. So quite a bit less and really inexpensive for a known brand and is the number one bestseller in key operated switches. What the heck does that mean? This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Now I was curious and I figured my curiosity probably spilled over to a lot of other people. How good is this two channel GM A3702 cheapest Pioneer amplifier available. How good is it? Is it worth getting? Well, let's find out. Here's the box. You can see 500 watts max everywhere on the box. 60 watts by two RMS is the power rating. Let's take it out of the package so we can get a closer look. Here's the amp and yes, 500 watts is plastered on the amp. Of course, that is maximum power. The amp is relatively small compared to my hand. You can see here dimensions are 9.7 inches length, 7 inches width, 2.4 inches for the height. Not a lot going on here. You can see on the one side of the amp, we have the low pass filter is either off or on. Gain control from 0.3 to 6.5 volts. We have RCA inputs for low level. Also speaker level connections for the high level inputs. That's really all there is to it. There is no adjustability to the low pass filter. It's either 80 hertz low pass or off. On the opposite end, Again, very simple. We have a 25 amp fuse, screw down terminals for power, ground, and system control or remote turn on. Also speaker connections for left and right. But notice the left is on the right and the right is on the left. And this is nonsense. Do you understand that? More nonsense here with a 500 watt max power plastered on the amplifier. But they do provide RMS ratings including 60 by 2 at 4 ohms, 95 by 2 at 2 ohms, or 190 watts bridged at 4 ohms. Now let's fire up the amp dyno. We've got the amplifier wired up so that we can do these amp dyno tests. If you haven't seen these before, on the left side you'll see the RMS power output in watts. In the middle you'll see the ohm load of the test. On the right you'll see the voltage of the dyno. You'll also see the remote display indicator so that we can calculate efficiency. First up we're going to do the stereo test. These tests will be performed at one kilohertz. We're using eight gauge OFC for power and ground and using 12 gauge OFC for the speaker connections. Certified test first, a 1% distortion, 68 and 66. So we do meet its rated power right at 14.4 volts. Uncertified up to clipping, which takes us to the point of the amplifier where it starts sounding bad, exactly the same. So this is one of those amps that kind of hits the point where it hits distortion and it just kind of gives up. The dynamic test sends a pulse tone into the amp, in this case a one kilohertz pulse tone. We got a little bit more 72 and 71. Efficiency class AB, 63.5% is not expected to be much higher than that. Two ohms, two channel, it's rated 95 watts by two. Let's see what we get here, certified first. And we do get that number, we get 102 and 96. Again, don't be concerned about those numbers. A couple watts here and there is not gonna make a big difference at all. Uncertified 104 and 96. Up to clipping, our voltage dropped just a little bit below 14.4. Dynamic, sending this pulse tone into the amp again. We're over 100 watts, 115, 108, right at 14.4. As far as efficiency goes, we did not measure it because I didn't have the clamp on there, sorry. You big dummy. Bridge test at 40 hertz. We use the left positive, right negative on the amplifier. Certified test will take us to 1% THD. We'll try that one first. And we're just a little bit shy, 184 at 14.58. I would still consider that passing because it is so close within the margin of error, 5% of component tolerances. Uncertified up to clipping, we easily got it. 201 
at 14.44. So to the clipping point, we easily got the rated power dynamic. We got over 200 watts, 205, right at 14 and a half volts. Again, this is the 40 Hertz test. Now what about that efficiency? 51.7 or right about 52%. Here are the results. You can pretty much see the test we just did. It is noted here, and people always point this out, that amplifier power doesn't really have anything to do with sound quality. We still like to show the numbers for those who want to see. Let's try out the cheap Pioneer amp, Smokey's Lounge. <laughs> I realize playing this over YouTube is not really helping you, but I can tell you, I was impressed with this amp. It sounded great. You know, we gotta try some Smoke Jacket Blues. I don't spend a lot of time in these tests talking about sound quality because I believe it's subjective. However, in this case, I did like the sound of the amp. I listened to a lot of music over a long period of time. That means that I was enjoying myself. So thumbs up, Pioneer. Let's try a song with a little bit more kick. The thing to note here is a tight bass, very good control of the woofer from this amplifier. Next up, I got out the six and a half inch subwoofer and said, let's see how this amp performs with a subwoofer. A lot of you will probably notice the impedance rise there shown on the MM1, but I can tell you this thing was getting down. You don't need a ton of power to get some really good sounds as proven here even though you can't really tell about how good it sounds i can tell you this sub was bumping let's try the woofer test with a little sundown six and a half getting down even after running it hard with the bass music for 30 to 45 minutes the amp did not get overheated it really stayed kind of cool but you can probably attribute it to the impedance rise it wasn't putting out a whole lot of power but it still sounded great now let's find out what's inside some chips off the old block i'm sure flip the amp over and take off the screws on the bottom of the amp and thank goodness this is not like the previous jvc that we showed and we had to completely disassemble it this one's very easy just take the bottom panel off and there you have the goodies. You can see here, class AB classic design with some 2200 microfarad, 25 volt caps for the power supply. The rail side sees 2200 microfarad, 35 volts. Then we decided we were gonna take off the clamps here so we could see the transistors. First off for the outputs, these are C5198A1941. These are BJTs. And then on the power supply section, we have the RF3205s, which are in-channel MOSFETs. Now let's move on to the pros and cons. Things I like, things I think could be better, at least things to be aware of. First off, the amp is cheap. At the time of the video, 65 bucks. It is small, did rated power for the most part. It does have a low-pass crossover if you want to use it with a sub. It is class AB if you like sound quality. And man, for under 60 bucks, it is tough to beat this little Pioneer as far as sound quality goes, in my opinion. Things to consider, it does have screw down terminals. I talk about that in the other tests where they have insert terminals. I like those better. It's a fixed crossover at 80 hertz. Low efficiency for being class AB. No remote bass control. 500 watts max plastered all over your 200 watt amplifier. Now I have the amp here shown with this 90s, early 90s, right for Fosgate Punch 45. And I did mainly because it's about the same size, about the same output power, but that Punch 45 was almost $300 back in the early 90s. This Pioneer amp is super cheap 
And man, seriously, I was just very impressed with it. This amp was bought by me on Amazon. This is not sponsored by Pioneer or anything. So I do appreciate you guys watching, commenting, and liking, and sharing my videos, all that fun stuff. Till next time, this is Big D. I'm out of here.